Hello, my name is Ryan Baxter, uh, and today I'd just like to give you a quick uh, tutorial of some of the sample applications that are part of IBM's Social Business Toolkit. Now, uh, Nicholas Heidoff uh, gave a great uh, demo of uh, the uh, Social Business Toolkit Playground, uh, which is an application uh, where you can go through and look at different snippets of code uh, that are using the various uh, Social Business Toolkit APIs and um, execute them. So for example, you know, when I click on the Get Display Name snippet, uh, it shows me the code uh, in order to use the APIs uh, in order to get someone's display name from connections uh, and actually executes that code and shows the results. So you can see here uh, the display name is uh, Frank Adams. Uh, I can even go in here and actually modify the code uh, in real time and you know, change the email address to kind of motto at renovations.com and uh, execute this code again and we'll see that um, uh, we now get Ted's display name uh, instead. So then I can also go here and uh, save the snippet or save the snippet as a new snippet um, and uh, keep track of different snippets. So um, I can easily go through and um, start adding new snippets to uh, the playground uh, for different APIs and stuff like that. And it gives me a good uh, starting point for how I can take, uh, how if I need to get uh, someone's display name from connections, um, I can copy this snippet of code and then build off of that uh, in my application. So it's a really useful tool. Um, the other application, though, that's going to be part of the Social Business Toolkit is um, called the SBT, uh, SBT Samples application. Now, this is uh, an application, unlike the Playground, uh, which is built off of X pages, this is an application that is actually built uh, using JSPs. Um, so if you're not running, uh, if you're not using uh, a Domino server or not using X pages with the Social Business Toolkit, uh, this is a, another useful example that pretty much has all the same samples as the Social Business uh, as the Playground, uh, but doesn't have the functionality to save new snippets. Um, so it's still useful for you, but may not just just lacks a little bit of functionality. Um, so you can see here, uh, since the Social Business Toolkit will initially support JavaScript and Java. Uh, you can see that uh, there's a place uh, you can either go to the JS samples uh, or the Java samples. If I click on Java samples um, and just log in here, I'll just log in as Frank. Um, we get um, uh, a list of samples that are pretty much very similar to uh, the samples uh, from uh, the, the playground. Um, you know, for example, if I go down to the profile samples and say get display name, uh, you can see here uh, I get Frank's uh, display name here. Uh, but when I click on the show snippet here, this snippet of code actually shows you how to use the Java APIs inside of JSP instead. Um, so depending on what language you're focusing on, uh, it may be more helpful to go to the um, the SPT samples application to see, for example, the Java code. Um, I can do the same thing, you know, I can see the same uh, type of samples if I go to the JavaScript samples page. Now, I also get to choose um, which uh, version of Dojo uh, I want to use uh, with the toolkit. Uh, you know, we'll be supporting various versions of Dojo and in the future versions of uh, other uh, JavaScript libraries like jQuery as well with uh, uh, with use alongside the toolkit. Uh, for the sake of demo, I'll just choose the, the 1.8 version. Um, and for example, if I scroll down to uh, the email uh, utility class so it's part of the toolkit, um, you know, I can see the snippet of code here. I just can't edit it, but I can still take the snippet of code and use it in my application, so it's still pretty useful. Um, and for example, I can go ahead and um, uh, test out this API uh, by filling out this form, patients.com, uh, subject can be hello world, uh, we'll just do a text plain my part here for the sake of demonstration, and say this is text. And we'll add that and then send an email. 
So once the email gets sent, it says the email was sent successfully. Now if I head over to iNotes here and log in as Frank, and take a look at his inbox, you'll see uh, here is the email I just sent from the SPT samples application. Um, at 11:25, which is at, at 3:58, which is uh, right now. Right. So this is the email I just sent. I can open that up and take a look at the, the content. Right. So um, this is just an example of you know how you would use the various APIs within uh, the SBT samples web application uh, as well, uh, which again has this pretty much the same functionality, especially the JavaScript side has the same functionality as the playground, uh, but you can. Uh, this is also useful if you're looking at using the, the Java APIs. Um, so I suggest you check, check that out. Now the other uh, application that's going to be part of the toolkit is uh, an uh, application called Acme Airlines. Now the Acme Airlines application is supposed to be a, uh, uh, a sample application, a real life sample application uh, that uses the uh, Social Business Toolkit APIs to implement some social functionality. So it's supposed to be, you know, a real use case as to why you would um, uh, use the, the Social Business Toolkit APIs inside your application. Um, so it's different from the Playground and the SBT samples application, whereas uh, in that it's not made to, you know, be a developer tool. It's more of a sample application for developers that want to see how they might uh, get some use cases and different ideas for how to use the toolkit within their uh, applications. So um, basically the, the gist of the Acme Airlines application is that um, you can go and look at different flights that Acme Airlines offers. So you can see here we have a list of flights uh, that Acme Airlines offers. Um, and uh, I can choose a flight and uh, book that flight. So if I click the book button here, um, a pop-up dialog comes up. And uh, this is a, an example of, uh, for example, the, um, the the Social Business Toolkit API is using OAuth 2 against Connections. Uh, so it's using some API, uh, Connections API, and it's using OAuth 2 in order, in order to authenticate uh, with Connections in order to use those APIs. Um, I'm already logged in. I already, my browser already has a cookie for Frank Adams since I logged in as Frank earlier. Uh, so I didn't get the prompt to log in, but it's ask, ask, asking me as Frank whether I want to allow Acme Airlines application, uh, the Acme Airlines sample application uh, access to uh, connections, and I'll, I'll click Grant Access. Um, so this dialog will uh, then close, and then you can see that the flight is booked. Now, the reason why the Acme Airlines application was um, uh, uh, using connections API is because what happened is um, the Acme Airlines application um, uses the connections report chain API in order to figure out who my first line manager is. Uh, because the, my first line manager needs to approve my flight request, essentially. Uh, so it used that API uh, in order to uh, send a notification to uh, my first line manager in order to approve my flight request. Uh, so if I go and look at the uh, My Flights uh, page of the Acme Airlines, you can see that my first line manager is uh, Lucille Suarez, who's the approver. You know, the status of the flight request has started, but yeah, not, not yet approved or denied. Now, if we head over to um, Connection and we log in as Lucille, we'll see a few things. Um, first, here in my activity stream, um, I'll notice that I have some action required uh, items here, five of them actually. You can see one of them is the flight request uh, that Frank just made at 4.01 uh, p.m., which is uh, about a minute ago. Um, also notice that uh, my connections mail uh, has a, an indicator here saying that I have new mail and we can see that there's a flight request email notification from Acme Airlines for Frank at 4012. So the application, what it did was basically uh, notify my manager, uh, Lucille, uh, that uh, Frank uh, has requested a flight uh, and it put both uh, and uh, uh, an activity stream entry in uh, Lucille's activity stream and marked it as action required and also uh, sent an email notification to her. Now if Lucille uh, clicks on uh, the activity stream entry, she'll get an embedded experience uh, for the flight request. So she can see uh, you know, who the flight request is for and some information about the flight. 
and then she has the ability to approve or deny the flight request right from her activity stream. Uh, we can see the same functionality in the email notification as well. Uh, so if uh, she opens her email from Connections Mail, we see the same exact flight request with the same information uh, from her email. So uh, Lucille is going to go ahead and uh, approve the flight request. And we'll see that the response was submitted. Now if she goes back to her activity stream entry here, uh, she'll see that it was already responded to, obviously, because she just did it from her email. Um, but if we switch back to Frank here and uh, refresh the My Flights page, we can see that the request is now marked approved. Uh, so this is a very simple um, use case, um, but it really demonstrates a lot of the, the APIs. Uh, so for example, uh, if we head and, and just do a quick tutorial here of the application, uh, the ECMI Airlines application is, is comprised of basically two projects that are part of the um, uh, social business toolkit. There's the ACME Social Sample Web App project and the ACME Social Sample Data App. This is uh, uh, the data uh, portion of the application where all the flights information is stored. Um, these are static files, so uh, the data portion of the app is static. So if once you restart the server, uh, the app is put it back into its initial state and it makes it really easy for testing and stuff like that. So it's a completely stateless application. Uh, now, for example, if we head to the web app and uh, take a look at um, in widgets, uh, the flight row widget here, uh, there's a, some code in this, in, in this uh, Dojo widget, but you know the crux of the functionality here is in this booking callback. So this is the function that gets called after the flight is booked, and you can see you know, here is the send email call, and here is the post activity stream entry call. So we look uh, quickly, here is the post activity stream entry. And after we basically create our activity stream entry, we use this activity stream service. Now this is part of the Social Business Toolkit API. And you can see um, we then just post that entry uh, that we created to uh, the activity stream service. So you can see in you know, just a couple lines of code here, we're able to post something to the activity stream uh, very easily using these Social Business Toolkit APIs. Uh, and you know that's just a few lines of JavaScript. So a lot of the um, the uh, crux of the posting to the activity stream is taken care of uh, within these APIs for you. So it makes it really convenient. The same is true for the email service or the email uh, send email uh, function. Uh, not very much here. Most of this code is actually uh, code to create the JSON object, which represents our email. Um, and but this, the the uh, code to actually send the email is, is taken care of right here. So you can see again, only in a few lines of code, we're able to send an email uh, using the Social Business Toolkit APIs. Um, now, uh, for example, if you're interested in taking a look at the embedded experience gadget, there is the uh, Airlines gadget here in Gadgets Airlines. Uh, we can open that up and we can take a look at. Um, the gadget XML for the embedded experience, um, you know, pretty simple again, but it's a great learning tool uh, for people looking to do uh, include embedded experiences in their applications. Um, and we can even take a look at the code in um, widgets, gadgets, airlines, the gadget approval widget uh, that um, actually uh, hooks up the approve and deny button. So you can see here we're just using some. Uh, Dojo code to add an on-click listener to the approve and deny buttons, and then we're um, uh, calling the uh, the data app uh, in order to mark the flight approved or denied. Um, so a lot of this code, especially in the Acme Airlines application, is, is super well uh, documented here. There's some JS doc, so um, you know figuring out and exploring it and understanding what's happening shouldn't be that hard. Um, if you're interested in taking a look at um, the SPT samples application, that was the, uh, this application here. Um, that project is in uh, the com IBM SPT sample.web uh, project. Um, so all the code here, if we open up the web content, all the code for all the snippets and everything are uh, included here. So it uh, should be really easy to explore that project as well. So that's a really quick overview of um, of uh, some of the projects in the Social Business Toolkit. Um, I'll definitely be creating more videos uh, about some of the nitty-gritty details, you know, for example, how do you set up your development environment, 
um, how do you uh, you know how do you configure uh, some of the different uh, endpoints? How do you po how do you point um, the toolkit to your connections instance? Uh, how do you point uh, the toolkit towards uh, an SMTP server or to send emails, for example. Um, all that stuff I didn't really explain in this video, uh, but there uh, I'll definitely create some more in-depth videos afterwards uh, around uh, those specific items uh, and any other questions anyone else has. So thanks for listening.